In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to fit nonlinear models to data using Excel. In this example here, I have some voltage versus time data that was taken during a lab experiment. So I have a column worth of time values and a column worth of measured voltage values. Based on theory, I believe that the data should follow a nonlinear mathematical model that is also given here on the right-hand side of the screen. But in this model, all I know so far from my measurements are time, the values of T, as well as uh, the output voltage. I do not know the parameters A, B, omega, or phi. So I'm going to use a nonlinear fitting process to determine what these parameters are. The first thing that I would suggest when uh, looking at nonlinear parameter fitting is you should plot all of the data. So what I'm going to do first is just make a plot of voltage as a function of time here. And with this plot, we can see that the data is highly nonlinear. It's definitely not a linear function of time. And also, if we try to fit a trend line to this using the built-in Excel functions, we see that there are no functions that will give us this observed behavior in the data. So unfortunately, we are going to have to use uh, nonlinear uh, parameterization or curve fitting. <coughs> All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make some space up above my the data that has been collected so that I can uh, enter some different parameter values. So I'm going to shift all of this data down by inserting some cells. And I'm going to make spaces for these uh, four unknown parameters. The unknown parameters again are A, B, Omega, and Phi. And right now, I'm just going to put some dummy values in their place. And we'll see what uh, this is going to achieve in just a moment. The next thing that I want to do is I want to, beside uh, the voltage values that were measured, I want to create a model of the output voltage values that I should expect with time. So in this column, column C, I'm going to uh, create a model of the output. All right, and now for all of the rows of data that I have, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate this model <coughs> based on the parameters that I established here and the certain instance in time at which that uh, measurement or that uh, model should, should predict the voltage output. So to do so, what I'm going to do is enter this equation into um, into the cell here. And of course, I don't want to enter this equation into all of the rows individually, so I want to use the uh, absolute referencing features in Excel so that I can enter the equation once and drag it uh, down through all of the cells. All right, so to do so, I'm going to start with my equal sign to tell Excel that I'm entering an equation. And the first uh, thing that I'm going to enter is the uh, parameter A. I want to use an absolute reference here because as I drag the cells down, I do not want that value to change. I want it to always refer to cell B2, which is the value that I'm going to establish for the parameter A. That value is multiplied by the exponential, which is raised to the negative parameter B. Again, this needs an absolute reference, times time. Here we do not need an absolute reference because I do want time to change uh, in this equation as I drag the cells down, or as I drag the formula down, excuse me. All right, that exponential is also multiplied by the cosine function, and inside that cosine function I have the parameter omega, again, which requires an absolute reference, multiplied by the time, which does not require an absolute reference, plus this parameter phi, which again requires an absolute reference. Okay, so I have entered my model uh, to predict the voltage output. Now, of course, the model does not predict the voltage output well because I have not changed, I, I've entered, I've only entered dummy values for these unknown parameters. So what our goal is going to be is to adjust these parameters so that they, the model matches the observed output voltage well. 
Before I do that, I want to uh, expand this equation down through all of the rows. All right? And the easiest way to do that is to right-click on this uh, lower right-hand box uh, in the cell for which the equation is entered. All right? Your cursor will change from a big, thick cross to a, uh, to a smaller one. And when that happens, you can just double-click, and it will automatically fill in the uh, entered equation down through all of the rows. Of course, it will keep the absolute references, but it will also, since we entered the time as being a uh, relative reference, it will continue to use the correct time value uh, for the row. All right, the next thing that I want to do is on this plot right here, I want to add my model to that plot. All right, so I can click on the plot and I can expand uh, the uh, the, the data range so that uh, the model also shows up on the plot. And what I'd like to do here is come over to the plot and change the display style for that data series because it is a model, um, not uh, it's not comprised of data points and I just want to make it look like a line. Okay, so I want a uh, solid line and I'm going to make it black and then I want um, no markers on my line. Okay, so in general when you're plotting data you want to plot it as data points using markers. When you're plotting a model you want to plot it as a solid line. Now clearly the model that we have based on these parameters does not fit the data very well. But we can use these parameters and sort of adjust them to determine what happens to the model. So as I uh, adjust parameter A you can see that uh, so you can see what happens uh, to the model, the black line, as I do that. All right, and you can see that we are starting to raise the amplitude uh, at the zero point when I change A. The parameter B has an effect uh, that we can discover by, again, entering different values into um, that parameter B slot. And you see that uh, as I increase the value, um, my oscillations that I have here quickly decrease. So if I go to a value less than 1, I get more oscillations. All right. I know based on uh, trig that this omega right here, this omega term is going to affect the frequency or how fast the oscillations occur. So if I have more, uh, if I have a larger omega value, I'm going to have larger uh, frequency in the oscillations. And uh, as I adjust that, I see that, well, 3 looks like a decent value that starts to match kind of the oscillation period that I see in the data. Uh, phi is going to be a uh, phase shift, and um, I can play with that value a little bit and see that as I uh, increase or decrease that value, it shifts how the cosine wave appears. Um, it looks right now, based on playing around with the parameters, that this uh, roughly fits the model. Uh, excuse me, the model uh, roughly fits the data with these parameters. Um, but of course we want to get better than that. Um, the way that we measure how well model fits uh, the actual data that was measured is uh, the same way that we did it with the linear fitting through using the deviations. Um, so what I'm going to do is create another column over here which are the uh, deviations or actually the squared deviations between the model and the voltage that was actually measured. So I'm going to call this the uh, squared deviation column. And to calculate that, I'm going to take the voltage that was actually measured, subtract from that the voltage that is predicted by the model, and square that. So this is our squared residual between the model and the voltage uh, that was actually measured and I will fill that all the way down so that I have um, the squared deviation for all of the time that indicates how well the model matches the actual data that we recorded. Just like with the linear fitting, our objective here is to reduce these squared deviations as much as possible. All right, so what I also need to do is I need to sum up all of those squared deviations. Right, and I'm going to abbreviate that SSD, and I'm going to take the sum 
of this entire column right here. All right, so now I can come back to my model parameters and start adjusting them to try to decrease the sum of the squared deviations to as small a value as possible. That again, I want to minimize the sum of the squared deviations here. Of course, I have four parameters to, to, uh, to try to minimize or uh, to adjust to try to minimize this sum of squared deviations. And there's a lot of work involved in doing this manually. However, now that I have a fit that's fairly close to the data, what I would like to do is demonstrate how you can use one of the Excel add-ins to, um, to automatically find these four values for you. All right, so uh, something that's imperative is that first you have to have the model close to looking like the data. All right, the next thing I want to do is I go, I'm going to use the solver tool in Excel to do this. If you go up to the data tab, there should be an analysis box, and in that analysis box, there's something called solver. If you do not have this on your Excel, what you need to do is go to the Excel start menu, or the office button, I guess, um, open that up, and then go down to the button that says Excel options. Once you're there, on the left-hand side of the screen, um, go to click on add-ins, and then down here at the bottom of that pop-up window, say manage Excel add-ins and press the go button. Then you need to come down here to uh, the add-ins that are available and make sure that the solver add-in is checked. After you do that, you'll say OK, and uh, if you do not have it installed already, there should be some little installation process uh, that will occur. Once that's done, again, under the Data tab, you should have this solver available to you. Now, what the solver does is it is an optimization tool. All right, so let me start the solver tool. Okay, and uh, when I do that, <coughs> it's going to come up with a, uh, with a box um, that uh, allows me to set the solver parameters. So, I said what we'd like to do is we want to try to minimize the sum of the square deviations. So that is my target parameter. So in this first box, the target cell that I'm after is the, parameter, is the, uh, the cell that contains the sum of the square deviations. All right. The next thing that I want to do is I can use Solver to do a bunch of different things. I can maximize a number in the cell, I can minimize a number in a cell, or I can set it to a, try to get it to adjust to a particular value. In this case, we want to minimize the sum of the square deviation. So I'm going to make sure that the minimize or the min radio, radio button is, uh, is selected. And then right below that, it says I want to minimize this value by changing these cells. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the cells that I'm going to allow Excel to change or vary um, to try to set this to a minimum. And those cells are the parameters uh, A, B, Omega, and Phi. Okay, so all four of these cells can be highlighted. Additionally, below that, if you have certain constraints on your model, such as um, maybe A cannot be negative or um, B has to be within a certain range of values, you can add those constraints in this box. But for this purpose right now, um, we, we do not need to add any constraints. Okay, so I've set the target cell as the sum of the square deviations. I want to minimize that value by changing these four parameters here. Once you've done that, you can click the Solve button, and Excel will go through a number of iterations uh, adjusting these values until it reaches a minimum in the squared deviations. It's going to give you a pop-up box saying, uh, I found a solution. Do you want to keep the solution? And what that means is, do you want me to permanently change the values in, uh, of A, B, Omega, and Phi? Uh, to be consistent with the values that I use to find the minimum sum of square deviations. And of course, you want to keep that, so you say OK. Now, what we've done, based on the data that we, ha we have and the model that uh, we thought the data should fit, we've established the parameters A, B, Omega, and Phi that, cause, that provide the best fit with the voltage data that we've gathered. 
In this way, you can fit almost any uh, nonlinear data to a nonlinear model using Excel.